Welcome to the Technology Equals Equality podcast. This is episode 29. Hey, welcome back to the Technology Equals Equality podcast. I'm your host, Lori Brooks, and this is episode 29. I just want to say thank you once again for joining me, everyone, here for episode 29 and continuing right along with our education-based theme as it's August and we are just about getting back to school here on the East Coast. Today, we are joined by Rick West, CEO and co-founder of Field Agent. If you missed episode 12, I suggest you press pause, go back right now, and check out the Field Agent episode where Rick West shares the Field Agent story as well as his entire entrepreneurial journey. But Rick West is a self-proclaimed mobile technology evangelist. He has a BBA in personnel and industrial relations with a minor in economics from the University of Kentucky. He is currently a member of the Mobile Marketing Research Association Board of Directors, and prior to starting Field Agent, he worked with Procter & Gamble in various assignments across the U.S., Hong Kong, and Bangkok, Thailand. Since leaving Procter & Gamble, he has been an entrepreneur for over 14 years. Rick has co-founded multiple startups during this time, including Core4 Research, Join, Field Agent, and most recently, ClassTrack. And today, Rick is here to share the ClassTrack story with us. Rick, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to speak with you again. Yeah, How have you been? I've been doing well, thank you. Class Check is, is a new product that you have come up with and are beginning to launch with the universities with student athletes, from what I understand. But that's kind of just a brief overview. So, Rick, please tell us a little bit more about Class Check. Sure. If you think of a field agent and, and what we do every day, it's primarily using mobile technology and crowdsourcing to, to, to quantify and to qualify uh, displays inside a store or answering surveys or understanding you know, how people engage services and products. But it's all around location-specific tagging and geolocation services. So that's the premise. So think about that being our engine. And uh, we were in conversations with the University of Arkansas about hiring some of their student athletes to work for us as interns. Uh, and the person at the time, Eric Wood, who's uh, the, uh, one of the associate athletic directors, said, listen, I, I'd love to send student athletes your way, but I need to better understand what you do. And so we were explaining our business model, and he just stopped us midstream, and he said, you know, I, I think you could probably help us with your technology because we have the need uh, to be able to encourage and monitor uh, our student athletes to ensure that they go to class because all studies show – that retention, success rates, graduation rates are directly related to classroom attendance. And so we kind of listened to him for a bit and listened through that and realized, you know, I think this is a natural progression of what we're doing, which is uh, instead of looking at executions inside of stores, let's look at executions inside of the classroom, primarily being let's help student athletes uh, just be accountable for what they've agreed to do, which is go to class, go to study hall, et cetera. Uh, so our, our tagline here is really just uh, helping student athletes be accountable and improving retention rate and graduation rates uh, at universities. That is outstanding. And uh, at the moment, how many universities are actually uh, employing the technology or is this something that is uh, an app that is I know that it's accessible via the app store on iTunes and probably in Google Play as well. Yes. Um, but how is it that it's being disseminated to the universities? Is it something that is, um, you know, you guys are presenting it to the university and they are then asking their student athletes to begin incorporating that into their schedule? Or is it something where you are um, expecting for the student athletes to recognize that the technology is available through, you know, advertisement and so forth so that they can begin implementing it themselves. So think of this as being a a little bit different than an app that you would see like a map my fitness, which says, hey, I want to map my runs or when I hike or when I eat certain foods. Uh, It's a little bit different than that. It really is driven by the universities since the universities would then come to us um, and engage us from a, a technology standpoint to say, all right, here are my student athlete schedules. Uh, here's mm-hmm. when they're going to study hall. That This is what it looks like for their daily schedules. They would employ us to do that, put everything together. Then they would go to their student athletes and say, all right, download the app, and it's got all your schedules in there. And as you're 
uh, conducting your daily you know, studies in classrooms and in your study halls, just simply check in and check out. Uh, so it's different than the field agent app in that if you downloaded it today, there really would be nothing for you to do or to use. You right. really have to have uh, an entity that has, that has signed up that actually sets you up as a user for the, you to be able to download the app and use it. Gotcha. Excellent. Now, what are the current procedures that the universities are using right now for their student athletes in terms of the ability to encourage and, and continue getting them. Are they using, you know, a hands-on counselor approach or, or relying on the coach of the team or team members? How is that facilitated now without the app? Yeah, so, so th- think of it in terms of, you know, for many of your listeners will have, you know, young kids or employees, whoever it may be. And, and what you don't want to do is constantly be the, you know, the helicopter mom or the the hovering parent or the person that's always walking around. Well, without technology, that's really what you have to do with your, your children or your employees to some degree to ensure that certain things happen. So universities today uh, either employ uh, students or uh, kind of part-time people to actually go around and do class checking. So in this case, Lori, you needed to be at class today at 10 o'clock. You have uh, shown the propensity of not showing you going to class. <laughs> uh, so they would have someone employed to be standing there to say, you know, did Lori show up? And if Lori didn't, they would send a text message to a counselor or to a, an assistant coach, and then they would contact you, Lori, later today and say, Lori, why weren't you at class today at 10 o'clock? Well, that's a very manual process, and from, a, from just an engagement standpoint, it's just a little bit awkward to have people standing around classroom doors waiting for someone to show up. Our premise is, why don't you put accountability back into the student's hands because you, Lori, agreed to accept a scholarship and you, Lori, agreed to go to class to make you know, good grades. So if you've agreed to that, why don't we give you a tool to help hold you accountable and to eliminate kind of the, the people hovering around to see if you've done something or haven't done something. Uh, it also okay. takes tremendous pressure off of the, the professors because in many cases, uh, the coach is going to professors saying, listen, I need you to – tell me every day if someone was in class, and it just created all this, this paperwork and this stress across the system. We feel that class check has completely eliminated that stress and put accountability where it, is, where it should be, which is back into the students' hands. Not just the accountability, but also the responsibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think it really, you know, uh, says something for the maturity level of the student when they are going ahead and making sure to check in and, and take care of their processes themselves. It's a really good learning process for the students. Absolutely, because remember, these student athletes are going to go from here to the field, and a small percentage of them will become professional athletes. Most of mm-hmm. them will be like you and I. They will enter into the workforce, and no one's going to be there in the morning saying, well, you didn't show up for work today. No one's right. going to be standing there saying, well, you know, you didn't show up this meeting today. So you are teaching them life skills, and it's just one more tool that will help them do that. Certainly, certainly. Now, of course, there are multiple benefits for the student athlete themselves. But what are the benefits to the university um, from from employing this sort of technology? Yeah, we we're, we're really started out kind of from a pyramid standpoint, and the top part of that pyramid at at, at at the crux of all universities. If you look at their heart and their their charters and what they say they're trying to do, uh, they want to retain students and have those students graduate. So if you talk to any administrator, a provost, a a coach, athletic director, they all should be saying the same thing, and most do, which is, listen, we have kids for a period of time. While we have them here, we want to keep them in school. We want to keep them in class. We want to retain them for that four or five years for them to graduate uh, and then have them become productive citizens when they graduate. So the number one benefit for them is that we know by keeping kids in class, they have a better chance of keeping them in school and having them graduate. So that's number one. Uh, the, the second thing is, when you think about keeping them accountable and, 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 and in, the, in the classrooms, uh, we know that that life skill that from a classroom standpoint, keeping them accountable, is also going to help, especially from a student-athlete standpoint, uh, just build the type of rigor that's necessary to ensure that they're also eating right, uh, that they're they're training right. It's all those those classic kind of skills that you you think you would you would have coming into a, uh, a university setting. But at 18, 19 years old, you may not be uh, as dedicated as you should be, or you may not have the principles in place that, to make sure 
uh, that you're doing the things that you should do. So this type of app uh, basically allows them to help train them into, hey, listen, you've got these things that are required today. This is what you did. You know, how can we work harder to ensure that you're successful in the classroom as well as successful in the field? So those are two avenues that most universities are looking at, class check, being able to help them with their student athletes. Outstanding. I feel as though there are multiple benefits for the universities and the students and population as a whole with the data that's uh, being derived from this. However, how is it that class check work? How is it that you guys are using the data that's being derived from uh, the employment of the technology? Um, and how long has it been, uh, you know, in play? How long have the uh, universities been actually actively using ClassCheck? You know, we, we actually uh, it launched this summer. So we were at uh, a conference called N4A. And while we're at that conference, uh, it was, uh, there were two other suppliers that were there that were just entering into the space. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is very new technology and a very new concept coming into universities. Uh, in the past, again, where they have employed uh, you know, very specific people to stand there with clipboards to check people in. So it's technology that's just now coming in. And, and Lori, the, the primary issue associated with this is this whole concept of Big Brother. The, the, the number yeah. one fear that everyone has is, oh, my goodness, you're now tracking me for everything that we do. Oh, my goodness, you're going to track and know every step that I take. And that's simply not the case. In our technology with ClassCheck, and we started out this summer testing with the University of Arkansas. Uh, we launched in June. We're in, in pilots now with about six, eight other universities into the fall. Uh, and as we're going to those pilots, the number one thing that the, the student athletes have, the provost has, the, the, the student affairs people have is that this feels very big brotherish. And what we tell them is that the way the app is set up it really is about accountability based on agreements you've made with your student athlete. So, for example, uh, our app turns on and off and engages about 15 minutes before class time and ends with class time. So, if you're not in class at 1 o'clock, you're going to get a text message or some sort of engagement that says, hey, Lori, you haven't checked in yet. What right. we're not going to do, Lori, is I won't be able to tell you where you are. The app is not going to be on at 10 o'clock at night because that's your personal time and I'm, I'm not, not engaging there. What it is going to do, it's going to you know, kick back on tonight at 7 o'clock because you're supposed to be in study hall from 7 to 9. So right. from a privacy standpoint, it's really, really important to know that that data is only captured during the predetermined agreement between the student athlete and the university. Now from our perspective, to answer your question about what we do with the data, uh, similar to what we do in field agent, uh, all the data is owned by the university, not us. So unless an administrator from our team has to get on and help someone with the data, we see no student athlete information. Uh, from that perspective, even from a privacy standpoint, there's no personal information uh, re regarding that student athlete. There's nothing specific there that we would have any privacy issues with. But to ensure that happens, uh, we have all the right parameters and the, the, the setup in, in, you know, in our organization ready to go such that we're protecting their privacy. So we're not syndicating, nor are we pulling the data together to be able to run any type of analysis on how things play out. Now, we have talked to the universities about being able to provide us information on the success of the product because what we're encouraged about or what we want to be encouraged about uh, is we're here a year from now. And we would hope to see retention rates going up, GPAs better, you know, classroom attendance better. And so over time, we hope to see those kind of numbers. But that will come from the university versus us pulling the data. That is outstanding. I, I'm very curious. Is it going to be solely for universities? In other words, um, you know, I noticed that through classcheck.com, if anyone is interested in going in and receiving a custom code, of course, the universities can begin the implementation process there on classcheck.com. But if someone is looking for a custom quote on implementing the software or the technology itself for classcheck in their sales force or in some other manner of that sort, um, would the classcheck team be open to quotes and, and thoughts of that sort? You know, you are such a wise person, Lori. You are. You're wise beyond your years. Yes, yeah, so if you think of Field Agent, again, the parent company, um, 
we look at uh, our expansion uh, related to verticals, not necessarily a technology change. So we put very, very stringent rails on uh, what we're focused on. So if you've got you know businesses that are listening now or other CEOs that are managing companies, you know my advice to them, and it's been given to me multiple times, is to stay very focused on the technology and where you are and be tremendously creative within those rails that you set. So our creativity becomes vertical-related creativity. So we want to use geotechnology, geofencing, all the GPS work that we're doing today. We want to use the, the engine of our app to go across verticals. So I think we've talked before that we work with CPG companies within field agent to ensure displays are up. We work with insurance companies to actually go out and look at buildings and facilities. You know, we look with, work with real estate companies and property managers to ensure that properties are okay. And then as we look through this and say, gosh, we could also look at individuals and, and to ensure that they're in the right place at the right time. So we started out with universities uh, because we had the, the, the need and the, the need was prevalent. But then we've taken that same concept and says, gosh, Lori, what if we had something that was called staff check? You know, what if we had something that was for contractors just to say, listen, here are here's my contractor today. Here are the eight things they need to do yeah. and pre and post to simply check in. And so we think that's a natural evolution. I probably will not be called class check, um, but it will be something along those lines. Because, Lori, remember, our 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 guts, the engine that we're driving is around GPS, geolocation specific data. We want to measure and capture that data. If you look across all those verticals, especially people with contractors, employers that need to be in a location at a time, we think this is a natural evolution to that. Definitely. Definitely. And that's how I felt, of course, you know, as I began looking into class check and, and really delving into what the info was, I was really excited because, of course, it, it can be a applied across uh, many, 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 many fields. Um, and it, I think class check is a better representation for the audience to understand what the field agent technology is, Rick. And I think that's, the, you know, part of the driving of having you come back on is to talk about it and to explain it a little bit better because class check, in my mind, can be applied um, slightly easier than the field agent technology um, on a much smaller scale. Um, I feel like the field agent technology is such big data, it almost seems like an imposing uh, piece of information for anyone to begin getting involved with. But if they look at it as just a standpoint of being able to check in and track and, and move forward with uh, their schedules in a different manner than they previously have had an opportunity to do, um, that this would kind of bring uh, to light that this technology really can be applied in many, many different areas. Um, and with that being said, of course, Rick, the show is designed to help entrepreneurs with coming up with those ideas for new businesses and hopefully to help you as well, Rick. So if you had a magic wand and could change anything at all about your processes with class check right now or the day-to-day -day and what you're doing, what would it be and why? Yeah, so from, from our perspective, it, it, I'll go back to having things on, on, on rails, right, to be really, really tight. Um, driving your engine, using the engine to become more and more efficient uh, it is key to what we do. But if we could change anything associated with that, I think it's really to your comment uh, just a couple of seconds ago where you said, Gosh, it, the big data seems a little bit overwhelming or it looks a bit overwhelming to what people are trying to do. So when we look at field agents specifically and not even with class check, uh, we want the listeners that are out there today to understand that uh, even a small scale execution or a small business could use field agent today for um, capturing one piece of data in one location. I mean, I think it's the best $12 you've ever spent from a DIY standpoint to go do that. I think class check is the same way. You don't have to have a thousand student athletes to make this work. You know, even for a you know, small college or a small, small organization, you can make that happen. So advice to your organizations or, or the people who are listening out there is that while we build things for scale, in hindsight for us, we probably should have done a little better job to ensure that we had a much more robust DIY model 
for the average person to simply be able to use our product on very small executions. And, and Lori, that's quite honestly what we've been working on the last six, nine months, specifically with Field Agent. It's to ensure that the average person can log in and use, and it's got all the tools that they need so that they can use the same type of technology that Fortune 50 companies use today. You are outstanding, Rick. Oh, thank you. I You're too kind. <laughs> I love having you on the show. You are always teaching us the information that can be derived from, from this sort of technology. It's always interesting to me, so I absolutely love having the opportunity to chit-chat with you. Let us know how it is that the audience can go about learning a little bit more about class checks. Sure. I mean, obviously, you can go to classcheck.com, which you, you can you can uh, do that today. Uh, we're also on, on all the basic social media outlets as well, so you can follow us there. Uh, but again, just kind of click into Class Check. We've got a great, uh, you know, one minute video that tells you everything that we do and why we do that. Uh, we've got some great testimonials there from, uh, you know, universities are telling you about what we do. And so reach out to us, and then either myself or Allie or someone else on our team will respond back to you. We're we're pretty user friendly. Rick, thank you, thank you again for your time today. We truly appreciate you joining us. Lori, it was my pleasure. I look forward to talking to you soon. And for listeners out there, make sure you stay tuned in to Lori. So let's help improve graduation rates across the country. Speak with your local university to have class check set up on your campus. Feel free to reach out to Rick at classcheck.com. If, in fact, you are looking for a personal quote for your local university, just go ahead and check out the classcheck.com website. There is a quick video there, as Rick explained, that gives a really in-depth look that you can share with anyone that you feel may be interested. So that is classcheck.com. You can always reach out to him through our show notes page at technologyequality.com forward slash classcheck. Thank you again for joining me here, everyone, for episode 29. And until our next episode, when we continue to hear the journey, find the pain and create solutions, enjoy the week.